our 4-H focus and today I am joined with someone very familiar in our community and to our 4-H family in our um, counties as well, a big supporter of 4-H, Gail Cunningham. Hi, Gail. Jennifer, good morning and a good day to you as well. Thank you. How are you doing? You know, I'm doing very well uh, for being a 2020 year. I guess <laughs> I'm doing real good. I've made it so far so well. <laughs> We're almost to the end of the year. So, you know, we, we have a, a good future to look forward to, right? <laughs> yes, we do. And I think uh, we've learned a lot of lessons in 2020. Um, uh, as we went through, uh, I sure had a different summer with not being with a bunch of 4-Hers and 4-H families at all the county fairs that I go to. So I was uh, having a lot of uh, remorse all the way through the summer. But, uh, <laughs> We did learn a lot through the uh, 2020 experience and hopefully for what we've learned, uh, we can move forward and even a more refreshing 2021. Yes, definitely hope so. And I know that you weren't the only one having withdrawal of not being able to go to the fairs and, and see friends that you, know, that you see every summer and you know, getting to showcase their projects and just, yeah, we adapted. I mean, that's one thing. We can be resilient and flexible and adapt, and we did the best that we could this year. And like I said, we're, we're looking forward to 2021 and it being a, you know, positive year. It'll be a good, it'll be better, right? <laughs> it will be better. Good. Now, I was told, hopefully this is correct, that you are a 4-H alumni? I am. I was a 10-year member of the uh, Prairie Green Happy Hustlers. 4-H club out of Prairie Green, Illinois, a very small 4-H club, but we were uh, a diverse 4-H club even uh, before diversity really set into the 4-H program. Really? Now, where is Prairie Green at? Well, Prairie Green would be in the uh, east central Illinois. Uh, Prairie Green is about four miles from the Indiana state line on the eastern part of the uh, state between uh, Hoopston and Wellington. Oh, all right. I learned something today. <laughs> okay. So did you, you were in Vermilion County then? Yes. Right. Uh, actually, no. We, oh. I uh, lived in Vermilion, but the 4-H club was in Iroquois County. Oh. So my 4-H uh, home county fair was the uh, Fort Iroquois County Fair up at, actually, when I started, it was at Melford, Illinois, under tents. And uh, I was uh, in 4-H when we moved to the Crescent City uh, location where it continues to be uh, now as the Iroquois County Fairgrounds. That's some great history right there. Well, Melford was some history. Uh, we had uh, a lot of esca escapades in uh, Melford while the county fair was there. When I was a young 4-H'er, uh, we had a tornado come through. Oh. Uh, we had a flood to where uh, sheep and hogs had to put bales of straw and hay in the pens to keep them out of the water. Oh my gosh. And we had tents blown away, and but it was uh, uh, it, it continues to be uh, an experience that I always look back fondly to, and the uh, friendships that I made as a young 4-H'er, starting in Melford and all the way through uh, the rest of my 4-H experience. Yeah, well, and to still be involved and still you know go be part of the Iroquois Fair like you do, you know, just to see how it's changed. I mean, just over the years. And um, speaking to that, how, how would you say that 4-H has changed since you were a member and seeing it now? I mean, do, do you think it's changed? Has it changed a lot, a little? Well, I think it's changed uh, considerably. Um, I, I think when I was 4-H uh, was, uh, for the most part, predominantly uh, agriculture driven. Uh, by farm boys and farm girls. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess we go back to the uh, plows and sows network of 4-Hers. Uh, most of us were uh, farm kids and uh, very few uh, uh, town kids were a part of the 4-H at that time uh, because they didn't have livestock or uh, uh, there was some urban 4-H clubs, but most of those were uh, girls 4-H clubs mm -hmm. where they had the sewing, etc., and baking and cooking. And uh, there was a separation between guys and gals at a time where they had a girls 4-H club. Uh, and basically, we did not realize it then, uh, but a lot of the 4-H clubs were the beginning of what we now call the STEM clubs, 
um, they uh, had references uh, to a lot of the sciences. But um, uh, it was a small 4-H club, but all of us were farm kids. And uh, so uh, the 4-H clubs had uh, meetings had to start after chores and the milking was done. Mm -hmm. And uh, had to be uh, done in home in time to get home, get your homework done, and be ready for chores about 3 o'clock the next morning. <laughs> Oh, a lot of work. But yeah. I've seen I've seen a lot of changes, though, Jennifer. Uh, you know, positive changes, uh, a lot more uh, diversity in the membership today. Mm -hmm. um, a lot more focus on, as the motto was, or the uh, the uh, um, the four H pledge was changed. It used to be all about club and county. Mm -hmm. uh, and now it's more about club and county and also the world right. as we see uh, the role of 4-Hers and the, uh, the positive youth development, which continues to be such a positive influence in America from uh, the rural setting for the most part, but now urban as well, uh, creating positive changes. And I see 4-H as uh, changing positively for uh, that positive change in young people. It gives them uh, a place to get mentored and to learn and to focus and also to be able to be a social with other young people that have common goals and common interests. Right, yes, I agree with that. Even, even if they have, like you said, the diverse backgrounds, there's still common goals, common interests that bring them together. And um, your point about the, the STEM projects that science, technology, engineering, and math, and um, even I, as a former 4 -er, you know, STEM wasn't around. That term wasn't around. We didn't, but you're right. They were incorporated in a lot of the projects. We just didn't, you know, know it or recognize it at the time. And the other thing that I've noticed, Jennifer, and I think this is a positive move uh, as 4 H has uh, learned uh, more focus groups. We've got a lot of like hunting sports, uh, shooting sport clubs. Uh, we've got a lot of focus area clubs where, um, the entire 4-H club is focused on that particular entity or that particular program. And uh, that's a place where we can add in a lot more people and a lot more people uh, and, and keep the interest level there as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, I know robotics is another popular one where it's a, a project specific clubs that we have and and, you're, and kids can be involved in multiple ones. I mean, maybe they have interests. They can yeah. be in a community club and a robotics club and a shooting sports club or dog obedience or, yeah, there's such a, a wide variety for them to get involved in. Exactly. And you mentioned robotics. Uh, a lot of the robotics competitions uh, amongst 4-H clubs have about as many people attending that as they do the county, uh, state uh, uh, champion steer drive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, what projects did you take as a, as a youth? Well, I grew up on a dairy farm. So obviously I had dairy cattle as uh, one of my projects. Uh, I had uh, hogs as well, as well, swine. And uh, those, those were my two uh, main focus. I did have a crops uh, 4-H project as well. And uh, I did have uh, one or two years of sheep. But uh, I turned that over to my sisters because uh, I didn't have enough time to get all the record books done for those <laughs> many, that many projects. So my sisters did take up sheep. And uh, uh, that was, for the most part, my project areas was dairy primarily and then hog production as well. Okay. How do you feel 4-H specifically has influenced you or benefited your life? Well, Jennifer, that's a loaded question, and it comes with an, uh, an awful lot of loaded uh, expressions of what it meant to me. Uh, I, I think the first thing it did, it gave me camaraderie amongst the other, some of the other farm kids at that time, in that um, we had a chance to socialize together outside of school and into a 4-H area where we had common interests and common goals. Uh, it also gave me some of the first time that I ever had of standing up in front of someone and giving a talk. Now you say, well, yeah, but you do that all the time now. No, well, at that time, I think the important thing was just standing in front of your peer group, your friends and your neighbors and, ta and ta doing a talk or a demonstration. 
And uh, I, I learned so much about that and about the communication skills and the importance of sharing those things that we've learned through 4-H. And I think the other thing is, is, the, is the camaraderie on a state level where we as, as 4-Hers, we got to intermingle a lot of different times with uh, at leadership conferences or at county fairs with the other 4-Hers uh, that had similar goals and similar projects, but they become friends that quite honestly lasted a lifetime. Those connections and the 4-H uh, members that I was with, I still am good friends with those many, many years later. So I think the camaraderie, I think the friendship, the common goal, uh, the common interest. And I think the as it progressed over time, as I became an older 4-H member, it was recognizing the importance of telling the story of the 4-Hs, of why our head is very important for clear thinking. And our hands are more important for larger service and our heart, which is better for greater loyalty and also our health to, to continue to be healthy for better living. And as I said earlier before, Jennifer, not only just for our club, but it became more important as a country and then a little bit later on uh, the world. And I think those are some of the things that I really feel like is important for the 4-H programs uh, back then and even going on today. Yeah, absolutely. That is the, other, the other thing, Jennifer, I did want to mention was is that, you know, in 4-H, we didn't really understand uh, uh, totally as out in the middle of nowhere as a small 4-H club of farm boys and farm girls, mm -hmm. the importance of the extension uh, of the University of Illinois and how that 4-H became a window to that University of Illinois where we could get contact with educators that truly were educated in a lot of different areas of study. I could call up uh, several different individuals through my 4-H club at the University of Illinois and talk about my dairy project, mm -hmm. to ask them questions, uh, the crops project, and uh, and amazingly so, even though my dad had been a farmer all of his life, some of the things that I learned through 4-H, through the window into the University of Illinois, was also very helpful on our family farm operation. So I think that is very, very important. And, uh, I, and I think it continues to be important to utilize that window to the University and more importantly, to the educators that have dedicated their life in educating others in those project areas. Yeah. Oh, th thank you for, for sharing that and pointing that out about how Extension does link all 102 counties, you know, in the state of Illinois with the University of Illinois and um, the education that it provides because, as you said, things are always changing. I mean, they're evolving. We're finding new ways. And um, yeah, the researchers, the educators, there with the university, they definitely, um, Extension helps connect that. So. And interesting enough, we talk about friendships. Uh, I went to, uh, had the luxury of being selected out of our county to go to uh, the leadership camp for our county and represent our county. And I was then put on the continuation committee where that committee of five would come back and, and plan the next leadership conference for the 4-H in the state. And out of those five, we all came from completely different parts of the state of Illinois. And they were from completely different back sets. Some with very small operations and some was from very large operations from a farm setting, etc. And uh, two of those were not even from the farm at all. Um, so in that, and I can still say that of those five, the other four individuals we are still friends today because of that, uh, the connection that we saw together that 4-H basically brought us together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you shared an experience together. That is, that's a terrific story, you know, thank you. Um, trying to think of anything in closing. Um, how about, let's close with a favorite 4-H memory of yours. <laughs> if you can narrow it down to just one. Just one. <laughs> Uh, 
I would say the greatest memory of 4-H was showing my heifer at the Illinois State Fair. And at that time, we showed in the Coliseum. And I got to take my heifer in for the champion drive. And my Holstein heifer was named junior champion at the Illinois State Fair through the 4-H. And um, I'll never forget that walk back to the 4-H, the junior building, to stall my heifer. And the well-wishers from all over the state that came as 4-Hers and uh, congratulated me. And uh, I think that and then being able to tell the story of that experience for many years, Jennifer, has been a highlight for me. And uh, I would not have been able to do that had it been not for 4-H. That's a very proud moment and a, and a, a great success. And how wonderful that so many, you know, probably complete strangers to you, but they, they want to share that success, you know, and, and celebrate you in it. So, and exactly. I know you definitely, you pay that forward because you're, again, one of our biggest supporters of, of 4-H in our local area with, um, you know, not only showcasing the kids at fair time, but also just throughout the year with their successes and accomplishments. And um, I hope you know that we really appreciate all that you do for us. Well, thank you. And it, uh, I guess from a servant's heart that I learned out of 4-H and FFA and coming from a small community of Wellington, Illinois, uh, I do want to pay it forward. And I've really appreciated uh, now interviewing a second generation of 4-Hers that now I'm interviewing the kids of the kids that I started interviewing. <laughs> but uh, to, uh, to highlight them and to, uh, I think, encourage them uh, to, to keep on and uh, stay at, at the point uh, of what 4-H really means and to really dedicate themselves uh, to continuing uh, the 4-H story and keep those 4-Hers uh, always in mind. And uh, it's always been a joy. Well, thank you again, Gail. And thank you so much for your time today and in doing the 4-H Focus interview with me. Appreciate it. Jennifer, my, my privilege. Thank you very much.